one of the things about the waterfall model is that usually the time period is pretty long. There is kind of like a steady pace for a long period of time before it ramps up close to the release date, right? As you get close to release, you go like, oh, this huge pressure. We've got to deliver, deliver, deliver. We're going to, you know, late nights and staying up. There have been a lot of late nights where I've kind of like stayed all night at office and gotten something done. You know, things show up at the last minute. There are bugs that need to be fixed. A lot of panic. But the panic kind of has a crescendo, right? It goes at the very end. There's a lot of panic. But then for the most part, of you, it's steady. You have a plan execute on the plan, it's a longer term plan, right? The problem with the waterfall model is that you don't see issues up until the very end, right? The late nights happen for a reason because, you know, there are problems. Those bugs were there in the code for a long period of time, but you don't see it until you actually get close to the release or the deployment or whatever that is. With Scrum, you get this what they call a sprint, right? You get these small sprints that you got to keep going and keep going and keep going. And it's almost like a, you have a waterfall every week, right? The problem is that the crescendo that you have is kind of split into, in an ideal world, that rush at the very end, in the case of a waterfall, is split into smaller rush at, to deliver at the end of every week. But usually what ends up happening is that it's not a, like a, you know, it doesn't equally distribute. If you sum up all the, you know, rush to deliver for a scrum, it's going to add up to be more <laughs> than the one time, you know, rush to deliver that you would have for a waterfall. Programming today is stressful, way more stressful than I remember in the 90s and early 2000s when I was just starting out. Back then, things would get crazy around deadlines, but at other times, I recall feeling pretty even. This is what I'm talking about, right? As you get close to the deadline, you basically have this panic and rush to, to do things. These days, however, the pressure seems omnipresent. Naturally, I'm interested in doing away with this feeling of pressure for the sake of my health as well as my productivity. So I've given a fair bit of thought to why things have gotten so bad, at least for me, if not for others, in the last couple of decades. I don't think it's due to stiff competition, shifting markets, or even tight deadlines. They have always existed. But one significant change that has occurred in my daily work routine, I've been forced to start working in sprints, usually one to two weeks, instead of spending larger chunks of time on larger projects. This shift has some unfortunate consequences. Why would sprints be more stressful? This is how sprints are doing us wrong. Sprints never stop. See, this is the thing that I was talking about, right? With the waterfall, you start out slow and you kind of has this crescendo. It goes up to the release. When you go to the release, you panic, late nights, all that stuff and nothing. You, you celebrate, right? You go on a vacation and then gradually start up. But sprints, you have smaller panics every week, okay? Ideally, I think this is what the thing says, the Scrum and the Agile thing says. You shouldn't have this. Ideally, it should be a straight line, okay? You shouldn't have to rush at the end of the week or the, at the end of two weeks. If you're panicking and you're not able to deliver what you were committed to deliver at the end of those two weeks, that means that you didn't plan right. You didn't estimate right, which is fair. But the reality is nobody does software estimates right. You just cannot estimate, right? Because estimation is basically guesswork. Here's the thing you should know about me, okay? There's nothing that you should know about me, but I would like to share about me. I'm very, very bad at estimating. I'm horrible at estimating, right? When throughout my career, when a manager has come to me and asked, Kaushik, estimate this for me. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. I cannot get, I basically have to guess, right? Estimation is all about guessing. The thing is, when you have um, you know, like assembly line work, right? You're doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's very easy to estimate. You know exactly what you need to do. You say, okay, I've done this before. It's going to take this much time. But when you have like, you're doing something for the first time, how can you even guess how much time it's going to take? 
You can, in the true sense of estimate, you can estimate it, but that's not how estimates are considered. Estimates are considered as you are gonna do this at this time, right? That's what estimates are gonna be for. It's like, you, this is the amount of work that you're gonna do, and guess what they're gonna do, right? This is what most companies do. You're gonna estimate what work is gonna happen in the next week, and you're gonna estimate what work is gonna happen in the next week. So you better complete this because guess what? There's work packed for the next week that you need to do. And if this slips, then this slips as well. So that's the reason why you kind of have this crescendo, right? You have to get this done because there's work planned and you don't want it to slip, right? When it comes to estimate, that makes two of us horrible. Well, we, guess what, Parth? We have company. A lot of people are bad at estimates because I, I firmly believe that estimates is just guesswork. You're just guessing. It's, it's good for planning, but when you're planning, going by estimates is basically you assuming the best case scenario, in my opinion. There is a chance that estimates could be wrong in both directions. You could be estimating too much or you could be estimating too less. And in either case, you need to plan for it. If you just estimate that it's exactly gonna fit, that's the best case scenario. You need to estimate for both an overshoot and an undershoot. So I don't know how many people do it, but that's what needs to be done. 15 day sprints. Do you think companies follow Agile because I heard an experience that ad hoc tasks keep coming? This is true. Well, you, you have to accommodate for ad hoc tasks. And this is this is one thing that's good about Agile and I hate about Waterfall. Without Waterfall, you're gonna have you, you have this huge ceremony for doing anything that's different, right? You have, with that waterfall, you start out with the requirements, you finalize it, any changes, you're gonna go through this committee, people have to have meetings and stuff, which sucks because that might have worked 10 years ago. It's not gonna work now. You need that flexibility. So Agile gets its name because of the agility part of it. You have to be agile, agile to changes. So. It's okay if new work comes in and if there is a good reason for it, which is fine, but then that means that you're gonna go back here and you're gonna change what you estimate, right? The problem is that that doesn't usually happen and that's where that's where it becomes a problem. You know, it's people don't like it. Don't like Scrum, Kanban is much better and gives freedom to developers. Yes, so the thing with Kanban is you don't have this thing anymore, right? You basically pick up what you can and then if you cannot, it just goes over to the next thing. So you're not packing up the next week or the next sprint with work that needs to be done, kind of assuming the happy path that you've covered everything in this thing. So yeah, I generally like Kanban as well. I think that's a better that's a better approach in general. Try to complete 60 to 70% of the work and give and then give estimations to my manager. Well, you're gonna have to do it sooner. Right? Managers never want to remove task out of the sprint at my last place. No, it's that's true. This is a problem because you don't, when changes happen, you don't want to do it because again, they would have packed work over here, right? Or even the team, you as a team would have packed work over here. So you cannot say, okay, something new came in. You, this, this cannot move. So what happens? This peak goes up because you're gonna have to get, you know, a rush to get that done. Padding the estimate by 20% becomes second nature. Yes, yes. Here's what's funny though. Padding happens at different levels. So it kind of becomes, that's the reason why estimates kind of become a farce. So usually the manager asks for an estimate and then the manager has to report to their supervisor, right? In my experience, that's what happens. The manager pads 20%. The developer is like, okay, I know that the manager is asking and I need to cover my behind. So the developer pads estimate. So it's like 20% here and then 20% there and 20% there. And the problem is in spite of that, we end up missing estimates so often, which means that we suck so much at estimating that even with all this extra padding, we, we have this, right? That tells us how bad we are at, at estimations in general. So it's, it's pretty bad. I wanna get back to this thing because this is an interesting idea. So you complete 60 to 70% of the work and then give estimates. Isn't that already too late? you estimate at the beginning of the sprint. So if you have, if you need to cover 60% of the work, then you're probably covering half of the sprint already. So how does that? I don't understand how you do this. But anyway, this is the problem with the Scrum model, right? This is, this is what ends up happening. While waterfall causes higher spikes in stress, oh, I hate this 
share code things. I'm just gonna switch to the reader view. While waterfall causes higher spikes in stress, sprints impose a more constant medium level stress. The difference lies between higher short-term stress and medium long-term stress. While no stress is entirely comfortable, our bodies are better equipped to handle short-term stress. I, I see what this person is, the point that this person is trying to make. Because you have, um, you have a stress response in our body, right? We have a stress response. When, when we experience stress, mental or physical, our body goes through a different, you know, it kind of goes through a different mode. There are other things that the body prioritizes over longer term. Right. Let's say there is a deer in you know in a lake drinking water, and then there's a lion coming to to hunt for food. Right. What happens in the deer's body at the time is it's not looking for longer like sustenance. Right. It tries to kind of switch gears to more survival at the time. Okay. So at the time, probably the digestive system doesn't get enough attention from the body blood flows to the limbs, it tries to run faster. So it kind of, it's not thinking longer term, the body kind of switches to, okay, survival. It kind of prioritizes different parts of the body. So high blood pressure is one of those things, right? It kind of, body increases blood pressure during stress because it needs to provide blood to different parts of the body in order to help the organism to run. We aren't running from lions, but it kind of triggers the same stress response. So maybe that's kind of what this person is saying, right? Longer term stress is harder to deal with. Short bursts of stress is okay. Sprints are involuntary. If a development team were to sit down and decide to deliver code every two weeks based on a process of their own design, one that makes sense to them and suited to their circumstance, that would be one thing. But sprints in a scrum-like process don't work that way. Every aspect of a sprint is prescribed. Its duration, its meetings, its tasks, even the roles of its participants. You might think that choosing your own process wouldn't make much of a difference, but research tells a different story. Autonomy, the ability to direct one's own work, plays a significant role in how the work is experienced. Ideally, Scrum is supposed to be we're running from Scrum Masters. <laughs> Looks like Scrum Masters are getting extinct, right? To use the, the wildlife analogy, nobody is opting for Scrum Masters anymore. It used to be a thing five years ago, but I don't think there are a lot of Scrum Masters today. Teams are supposed to be self-organized. So yeah, we, there, we don't have a lot of Scrum Masters to run away from. We are our own Scrum Masters, which makes it even harder, right? It's worse. Try to complete 60 to 70% of development. This pattern is helpful when I don't have a complete idea on what's what thing I'm going to work on and what challenges are going to occur. It, it is fair. It makes for better estimates because you kind of know what you've done. So your estimates are always going to be accurate. But I think you're going to have to kind of like preload the work. Right? You're going to have to work extra hours at the beginning so that you can take it easy later and you can get a good estimate so you know exactly what you're going to complete. It's a good strategy, but then in your case, isn't the work like this? It's basically this, this edge flipped, right? You start out with a peak and then it goes down and then start out with the peak and then it goes down. It's basically the same sort in the reverse order, right? You need to do that so that you can estimate on time. It's still, if it works, it's, it's good. It's good. It's a good way to do it, right? There are still tons of scrum masters in big companies. And if you use safe, it gets worse. I have no idea what safe is. Then you can execute the plan ahead approach. Yeah, I think it's, if you can preload the thing, like move the stress up front. I see the logic here. I see the logic here. If you're going to be, so here's the thing. I see the logic in what you're saying, my friend. If, if you're going through the stress anyway, at the end of the sprint, why not go through the stress at the beginning, get some idea about what it is that the work that you're doing, give an estimate, and then once it's done, you can kind of take it easy because you know that you're gonna get that thing done at the end. I don't know, might be a good approach. I've never tried it, but it might be a good approach. If it, if it works for you, then for sure. So here's the thing about deciding on a model that works for the user, right? Ilya mentioned about Kanban. 
Kanban is one of those things. Kanban is a model where you pick as much as you can. You don't, you're not committing to what you're gonna get done at the end of the sprint, right? You're picking what you can. And if you didn't pick anything, it basically kind of goes to the next sprint. Like anything that you didn't pick kind of falls through. You're not, you're not committing to it. The problem with Kanban is that then it's hard to convey what value you're delivering to the stakeholders because the product manager is gonna to come to you and says, tell me what I can get done in two weeks. What can I release in two weeks? If you're doing Kanban, you still need to estimate what can get done even though you're not taking those things, right? Even though you're not committing to delivering, you kind of in a way committing. So that's what's gonna be a problem. No matter what model you pick, it's you're gonna to have to do it. Safe is an agile framework built by, by IBM built for enterprise companies. I guess in a way I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad that I don't know what that is. Thankfully I don't know what that is. But yeah, agile framework. That sounds like very agile-y. I saw this post on LinkedIn. Somebody had like what are the things that you need to do agile? And it had this huge chart with all kinds of buzzwords. Agile framework. All kinds of buzzwords. And I was looking at that thing going where is the coding in this thing? What block represents the thing where you actually sit down and write code? I spent like, I don't know, a few minutes. I didn't find it and I gave up and moved on. But it was like this huge, that's what Agile, you know, when I think Agile framework, that's what comes to mind. Yeah, I'm glad I don't know what that is. Ilya, if you're having to deal with that, you have my sympathies. Sprint neglect key supporting activities. Another stressful aspect of scrim, Sprint in a Scrum-like environment is that they leave you feeling unprepared for the next task. This happens because no time is set aside for proper engineering prep work. There's far more to a task than simply typing out a solution. You have to, ideally, you have to accommodate that in your estimation. But again, we are bad estimators. We don't accommodate them and we're going to have to do that in that, in that spike. Scrum fall, the real and worse picture. Okay, ideally <laughs> it should be a steady, but then that doesn't happen as well. So what the author is saying is, these spikes also go through the crescendo near the release. This is the reality that happens, which is, which is really worse. In this case, you get the worst of both worlds. Stress level starts high and only escalates as the major release approaches. This I feel is a problem that can be solved even with Scrum. Because what you should be doing is you should be releasing often as well. There shouldn't be a big release. If you have a lot of sprints for a release, this can be solved. Ideally, you do a sprint here, release here. Do another sprint, release here. Because you already have that tension, you already have that stress at the time focus on a release and get something out. That's what you should be doing. So this I don't agree with. If you're doing this, if your organization is doing this, this can be fixed. Just release often. You already have that stress. Just push something out to production. Keep pushing out. This, the problem of waterfall is like this crescendo happens only because we kind of hold on to a lot of changes and release at once. So all of those problems kind of happen at the same time and it becomes much more harder to deal with. So if you're having this, if you're doing this, why even do this in the first place? Might as well do waterfall, right? So ideally what you should be doing is releasing at these points. So this, this I don't agree with for this article. This is, this is wrong. This is an opportunity to fix. But yeah, so this is, a, this is an interesting article that I found, which is like, is Scrum stressing you out? It is, yeah, it stresses out a lot of people.